Good morning and welcome to Study IQ. I am Prashant Mamani. Uh, see friends what's written here. Fear is a reaction, courage is a decision. Yesterday we talked about the two compartments of brain, isn't it? One is emotional one and the other one is the logical one. We know that uh, the emotional brain captures information before this logical mind. And this is the thing with the fear as well. Fear is a sort of emotion and it is captured by the emotional compartment of the brain and if we allow it to take over us then we would be reacting right all the actions that we do in fear is reaction but if we have a fine balance of uh, emotion and logic and if we take a conscious decision right then it turns into courage so that's the meaning of fear is a reaction courage is a decision this is said by uh, Winston Churchill. Dear friends, uh, before moving ahead, please allow me to introduce to our pen drive and tablet courses. We have this courses, different courses for SSC Bank, UPSC and other government exams. At present, 30% discount is available on it. So if you don't have it, I would recommend all of you to get it as soon as possible. If you have any further question queries, you can feel free to give us a call on this number or you can check out our website as well. The first article and uh, you can see a magnificent animal this animal is known as snow leopard yes we do find them in India and this editorial is about worrying, da worrying downgrade what it is all about let's check it out now snow leopard uh, they have lost their endangered status now basically you might have heard about this or if you not then let me introduce this thing as well to you IUCN. IUCN stands for International Union for Conservation of Nature, right? You see, it's a basically a sort of an independent organization. Remember, many times you find this sort of questions in your prelims that uh, whether IUCN is working under United Nations or um, other other bodies like uh, inter intergovernmental. Uh, panel on climate change or what no it is not it is a sort of independent body right so keep this in mind it is not working under anyone from last 50 years it is engaged in conserving both flora and fauna right it's not only limited to um, the fauna that is the animal world it also looks after or conserves the vegetation and the natural natural vegetations and plants and herbs and serves right now it has uh, it comes out with a red list now red list as from the name itself you can understand all the animals flora and fauna uh, that are going to be or they are facing different sort of uh, risk level uh, they would you will find them in this red list and here is a small chart you can see threatened categories so you have critically uh, endangered species CR then you have endangered and then you have a vulnerable isn't it so now what has happened here is that snow leopard that used to be in the endangered species that was a bit a sort of between this yellow and red it was in a sort of light red area now it has been downgraded to vulnerable so it indicates that it is a sort of healthy sign like conservation efforts are working isn't it this is that's what we can deduce from this thing but that's not all about it uh, and uh, let me give you a small technicality about this technical details like if you find say for example the snow leopards if the population uh, exceeds 2500 then uh, from endangered they are uh, taken into or their, their category changes into vulnerable one but this is again we know that climate change is going on poaching and all these things uh, trade of uh, animals right dead animals and the skin and all these things there are people uh, and I would rather say crazy people who buy all these things um, this this animals any animal right yeah, if you like it or not whether it may be reptile or any animal or uh, living creature has something and something it has a role in our ecosystem so if we are destroying them then eventually we are destroying ourselves as well the only thing is that we cannot see it so we don't uh, we take it for granted now it is causing worry as I told you that uh, this just crossing 2500 mark should not be the reason to uh, uplift the the status of this snow leopard because uh, the biologists they say that it will send a sort of wrong signal uh, right it will uh, it will send a wrong signal and many times when we have this sort of things then we will find that okay now we uh, this thing is out of danger so let's focus on other thing and then we realize that we are not paying that much attention 
uh, to this particular animal the habitat that is the range or the place where you find them of course uh, from the name itself you can understand that it is a snow leopard that means you will find them in the places where you find snow and in this part of the world uh, this here generally speaking you find mountains and if you see the whole himalayan range of india parts of nepal as well right uh, could be pa yes bhutan parts of bhutan and uh, then uh, you have parts of tibet and if you go to higher uh, higher latitudes here in kazakhstan parts of russia mongolia here as well in afghanistan as well you can see you can you will be able to find this snow leopard so but the maximum area or the major range is india so that is a good thing and again it is a sort of responsibility as well for the country 1.3 lakh square kilometer this whole range you find them right and uh, these are the states when you have jammu and kashmir himachal pradesh uttarakhand sikkim and arunachal pradesh these are the states in which you find this snow leopard now the thing is uh, there is going to be a meeting of uh, of the people who are working to conserve this uh, global community uh, is going to collaborate with each other they are going to meet each other they're going to have a summit and it is known as global snow leopard and ecosystem protection program right uh, all these countries that uh, in which you find snow leopards are going to meet each other and they are going to uh, make a plan how we can further uh, further protect this animal at present uh, we have to ensure that we don't lose the momentum right we should not lose the efficiency or the speed or the project uh, should not be uh, send under the carpet we have to ensure that it is an ongoing process we want to see it uh, definitely in this least concern or you can say that uh, no threat at all right this sort of category uh, hopefully we should see this snow leopards in now at present there are two big challenges through which this snow leopards are going through first one is the trafficking in live animals in central asia uh, they are using them as captive animals they are using them in circus and other things as well so live animals are going there and many a times uh, you also find that uh, they are killed and they are uh, their hide and skin and their bones are sold in different parts of the world uh, the other thing particularly in china there is a great demand of this sort of exotic animals the other thing is uh, the hostility from the communities now communities uh, you know that india has been able to india has uh, india is a good example uh, when i say communities then you know that there in india you find many tribal people many shepherd communities who are uh, engaged in herding cattle and livestock and uh, this snow leopards generally speaking they attack their goats and sheep and donkeys and other animals so to protect their uh, livestock uh, the people uh, set different traps they many in many places it used to take place they used to feed poison to this uh, cats and they used to die they used to catch them burn them this of this sort of things used to take place but indian government or the the people who are looking the department forest department and indian government what they started doing they started providing insurance apart from that they started taking the note of the livestock so say for example if someone is having a, a let's say 50 goats right and if one goat is uh, taken away by this uh, leopard a snow leopard then government all he has to do is he has to go to the nearest office and he has to report that this sort of thing took place and the government will ensure that uh, they will do a s sort of a small searching thing and once they are happy that okay this is the thing then generally speaking uh, the money is given to this people right it is a smooth flow it, it is generally speaking relatively a smooth transaction so in this way these people are not concerned about their loss in loss in livestock so this is a sort of good example and other countries can follow this thing as well the other important item is here you can see it is written uh, steppes in high asia steppes are basically grasslands uh, uh, today we are talking about this thing but in future definitely when we will talk about or when this topic will come in our touch then we will go through it in detail you find different grasslands in different part of the world you have in america uh, you have in uh, south africa you have in parts of uh, asia as well so 
step is are basically a huge or you can see a grasslands right and they are on a very long very wide stretch a huge amount of land is covered with grass so they are known as grasslands it is believed that uh, this steppe is in high asia uh, can withstand the climate change that is taking place and uh, it will support this himalayan region and in this way and the future of snow leopard if we protect them if we provide the right environment then snow leopards can thrive in this part of the world moving on to another item and uh, this one is waiting for a signal it is about railway safety and where do we stand at present the thing is uh, dear friends uh, this article again is written by someone who has worked in a higher position in with the railway right uh, so the things that we are going to hear or the, the things that we read from this article is uh, of course coming from a person who has who knows in and out of railway he knows the problems he knows the solution etc etc now from the age, from for the longest time we know that how railway ministry has been uh, working or the in general the railway right of our country it is facing problems from ages and recently we saw that after a couple of accidents or derailments uh, in fact the minister uh, union railway minister suresh prabhu at that point of time it was suresh prabhu he had to resign because of this sort of accidents earlier railway was in famous for uh, corruption and uh, lack of facilities we know i'm sure many of you might have traveled as well in railway and you know the state of food uh, cleanliness was a big issue before narendra modi government but after swachh bharat abhiyan and all those things uh, cleanliness has improved in railway but earlier it was horrendous and uh, there were uh, cases of uh, rapes there were cases of sexual harassments uh, free traveling right uh, paying money to the ticket checker and then you can <laughs> travel wherever you like so this there were many sort of issues apart from safety but this one is uh, this article is focusing more on the safety side and what are the things that we should do etc now uh, it starts with uh, the same thing that for decades the lack of consistent political direction has affected the railway what is happening is after every few years or after every as a short period of time we see a change of guard that means a new minister will come and he will look at, he will be the main boss of this railway ministry now i'm sure you know it that minister is the top boss you have uh, chief secretaries and secretaries and other officials but this are uh, they are all bureaucrats and uh, of course uh, they are the permanent body they are the permanent uh, member they are the government employees isn't it uh, but and the ministers are the main boss because they are directly represented by the people of our country so this is the reason why they are on top of this is uh, this is how our system is designed now the country lacks civilian expertise on railway matters right because there are only few ministers right who are interested few politicians who are interested in this railways because it is a sort of 24 by 7 job right you know that there is no day off uh, when you are in railway it is a uh, every day it, it there is something and something to discuss about so it is a sort of tiring thing other ministries are there are some ministries that are easy to handle but railway ministry is a big and particularly when you have such sort of railway is having a legacy of uh, this sort of issues then you know it is very challenging now the best thing or the the results uh, that uh, that takes place in railway it is quite uh, uh, we, the way we take it is very lightly you can see see the results are determined by ministry and railway board relationship that means if the railway board is behaving as or it is acting as per the whims and wishes of this ministers then things will be fine but if they are rejecting or if they are not agreeing with the ministers decisions and things like that then uh, the decisions or the opinions provided by these experts because remember it is this officers who have expertise ministers as i told you and as you can understand they come and go but these officers are going to stay there forever isn't it for 30 years at least they are going to work for the railway so they have their expertise in this area but if the minister is not 
um, is not taking the the advice or the expert opinion provided by this officers then it is going to be detrimental for the ministry because for the whole railway system because what happens generally is that the decisions that are taken are sort of lucrative in nature that means they they are taken the decisions say for example some a minister of railway is from up for example then he will come out with and if elections are coming in uttar pradesh then he will come out with uh, schemes that are that will be pertaining to uttar pradesh whether we want it or we don't want it it doesn't matter it depends on the political uh, necessity and uh, because of this thing because of uh, pro political decisions um, this are this are the this is one of the main reason why we why we are seeing this state of our railway and uh, if we would have taken pro railway decisions then things would be altogether different at present what is happening is haphazard introduction of train is taking place right on one track uh, there are some technical uh, things right so say for example you have this one track here so there are limits like on one day say for example you should uh, 10 trains should pass from uh, this particular track after that uh, more than train uh, more than 10 trains are not allowed etc etc but then as well we are introducing new trains and we are not caring about it we are just ensuring that more people more train are running on the track the other thing is the, the, this thing is costing us a lot and what is happening is the freight charges right all the goods that we supply through railway we are overcharging it because of this thing things are becoming expensive and uh, road transportation is in direct competition with railway so it is in fact winning uh, in terms of uh, this uh, railway because uh, the charges the extra charges that is uh, that is applied on this uh, goods transportation and these charges are applied so that uh, subsidy fares uh, or the passenger fares can be subsidized so this is a sort of uh, this is a very wrong strategy because this is uh, creating loss for railway and it is also not beneficial for the development of the railway people has to pay what they have to pay isn't it they have to learn to pay they have to learn to uh, they have to unlearn this uh, reliance on subsidy this is a thing that uh, should be taken should be done and investment uh, is again done in some sort of unwanted uh, facilities and modernization and induction of new technologies is conducted but there is no sort of long term plan so these are the issues through which railway is going and recently we saw that utkal express derailment right and the one of the main reason behind this utkal uh, express derailment was that uh, repairing of tracks right was done without cancelling the train what we are trying to achieve here is that we want to ensure punctuality we want to increase the speed we are focusing more and more on speed and punctuality but in this increase of in this desire of these two things what we are neglecting is maintenance and health and safety of the people who are traveling right so, and this is basically the th situation is the outcome of three inconsistent goals one which we have already dis discussed the second one is moving more people by continuously adding trains even when sections are saturated and the third one is diverting freight earnings to subsidize passengers so these are the issues and maintenance remember maintenance should be done even if we have to delay the train we cannot risk the life of people and then the new minister Piyush Goel uh, should work to inculcate a culture of safe health and safety in railway and uh, the last thing regarding this thing is field inspections now what uh, railway ministry is doing it is asking this field inspectors to connect with people and be on social media this all things are out of this person's preview right they all they all he or she has to do is to ensure that things are right at the bottom level or on the field that's his or her main job rather than connecting people in social media this is not something they should be allowed to do they should only focus on health and safety and they should ensure that everything is fine in the field moving on to another item this is about uh, diary of a very long year this uh, is pertaining to surgical strikes it is a sort of evaluation right of uh, whether surgical strike um, 
has any benefits or not has india benefited from this surgical strike and 29th september will mark one year of uh, this surgical strike and both neighbors since then if we if we go through it then we find that both india and pakistan are not interacting with each other right both neighbors have limited their interactions and firing in fact across the borders of jammu and kashmir has gone up and up and recently we saw that both uh, nations were um, were attacking each other of course verbal attack took place uh, or diplomatic attacks took place in united nations general assembly as well we have one news item today which we will discuss about uh, about this uh, issue of uh, or the uh, the tussle that is going on between india and pakistan in united nations general assembly now the future of the foremost regional forum that is sarc we have talked about sarc right south asian association of regional cooperation i have provided you enough maps regarding this thing so that is one of the reason i have not provided you a map here right got I, I'm I'm sure now things are crystal clear in your mind when I say Sark. I'm sure there is a picture popping up in your mind, and you know which countries we are talking about. Now, last year in 2016, the Sark meeting was cancelled because Uri attack took place. Right, there was a, a sort of a huge, massive attack in uh, Uri sector. Uh, this is in India, and this was conducted by the terrorists from Pakistan. And because of this thing, India. boycotted because this meeting was going to take place in islamabad pakistan so we cancelled our our visit and uh, right after our cancellation the other countries as well joined in like uh, afghanistan bangladesh i think was the first one to react and say that we are also not going to take part in it and the problem between this two countries that is pakistan and india is going to impact the whole region right this the tussle between this pakistan and india the thing is there are other countries as well in this region and uh, see if you think uh, in the other way just for a minute if imagine if uh, both of these countries are having good relations with each other then there would be no problem at all in this region of south asia But the other thing is that we can prosper and develop as just like uh, the way after world war 2 Uh, this uh, european continent has prospered right uh, you see the way france germany england and other countries they are all developed countries at present isn't it and they used to fight with each other in world war 1 and 2 but now they all are having a very peaceful and cordial relation with each other so something similar can take place you never know that sark could be the next uh, sort of example of european union something similar to european union a sort of one market or sort of a joint Uh, free trade area but the say uh, but until and unless this pakistan and india problem is not solved things are not going to change over this part of the world now regional security sim- remains and battle see here uh, what is happening american policy in south asia is confusing continuing turmoil in afghanistan we are seeing that lots of people are dying here and there right uh, india and china rivalry is also going up and of course india and pakistan a hostile towards each other now the thing one thing that has uh, came out from this uh, surgical strike is that nuclear attack threats earlier it was believed that if we sort of attack uh, pakistan or if we conduct any sort of surgical strikes then it may lead to a sort of war like situation but that is uh, it has uh, proven uh, the, it has been proved from this surgical strike that nothing like that it is all nuclear bluff nothing like that will happen if in fact india too we too have uh, this uh, nuclear weapons so pakistan will not dare to throw any sort of nuclear bombs on us because uh, they know the result now the other thing is that uh, regarding this thing that what army is saying at present even in fact in today's newspaper as well you will find a statement of uh, army chief saying that surgical strike was a message right it was a message that india wanted to give to this country of pakistan but what is happening is that on the on the higher level right on the higher level that is on the top level of uh, of um, of this two country right say for example this is a pyramid here and uh, this is the bottom level here you have all the foot soldiers and boot soldiers and the, here you find the people who are guarding the border and here you have all your high ranking officers and the government etc so on this level things are 
come but here the the problems are increasing day by day and which is not a good news at all now there are two sets of challenges uh, right and uh, they are recurring or they are exacerbating uh, day by day and the first thing is that uh, the border battles between the two militaries are uh, the way things are going on on daily basis they are fighting each other and this could lead to a sort of battle and the other thing is that there is a sort of hyper nationalism uh, what i mean by hyper nationalism or what this article is trying to say is that uh, now things are getting more and more aggressive and uh, there is a demand of uh, this sort of uh, continuous surgical strikes and things like that which is tactically not or strategically not that right the other strategy uh, but like the strategy of punishment uh, if we see from the outcome of surgical strike basically if we analyze then see any sort of punishment strategy requires a sort of consistency and commitment and this uh, surgical strike was basically a sort of one off operation that means one time you go there finish it and come back so one off thing is not going to help here uh, if we have to do anything then it should be uh, continuous and uh, it should be consistent right and uh, so this is the thing that is uh, lacking here the other thing is that uh, launch pads right uh, if we go through the statement of uh, some high ranking officers of army they are saying that the launch pads and terrorist camps have in fact increased after surgical strikes more terrorists are now f are, are found in this part of the world and they are uh, one by one we see every single day we read news about this thing isn't it and pakistan's response is continued without much reaction from Delhi so Pakistan is also attacking us but New Delhi is not doing anything about it this is the thing if we see the the scenario of if we go through the figures from this um, January and September 2016 then we find that uh, 110 militants were killed and uh, 38 army personnel got martyred but uh, after the surgical strikes you can see that things are getting bleak isn't it more soldiers have lost their lives and of course more these militants were hunted down as well so you can see the severity has increased so basically surgical strike on tactical level it can be considered as a victory uh, the operation was successful but a strategic value for or the long term benefits are are not that high as uh, we were expecting the other thing is the main thing that India can do here is that India is considered as a big brother in this region and regional stability should be the main strategic goal for India. It is going to be beneficial for both countries and the whole region. This article is written by M.S. Faminathan. I'm sure you know him very well. He is the father of Green Revolution in India. So, of course, pertaining to agriculture and uh, this article starts with basically the way population is going up and the food scarcity we know demand and supply if we have more population right then of course you have more um, mouth and uh, you have more mouth to feed uh, and if you have limited supply or the supply if it is falling down then things are going to be expensive so this is a thing that is going on in at present because uh, it is uh, expected that or it is a, a estimated right that uh, by 2050 the population of the world will exceed 9 billion this is a very serious thing and in fact you will find 5 billion people uh, will be living in Asia alone now United Nations sustainable development goal number two is end hunger achieve food security right improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture this four things are being discussed in this article as well and this article talks about research it gives emphasis on research and of course research is the key because all the things that we have achieved may it be green revolution may it be other items right in in the field of agriculture if uh, India is able to increase uh, its grain production up to five times in the last 50 years then it is the the, uh, the credit goes to strong scientific research and research can help us we, we can find new ways of uh, doing agriculture practicing agriculture and in this way we can improve this uh, nutrition value and other things as well now what is the need of the hour as per Swaminathan ji he is saying that there should be an integration of agriculture production 
nutrition and health now he is saying that we are living in a time when we have to uh, have this sort of triangle in this triangle you should have all these three things you should have agriculture production you should produce enough that can feed everyone that can ensure that the price is down all the food that you produce ensure that it is uh, high in nutritional value and you should also ensure the health of not only the human beings but health of environment and the agriculture field as well so however the these things uh, of course if we would have applied it then we won't be discussing this thing isn't it because india still at present we have uh, gained self sustenance in 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 grain production but then as well we have food insecurity we have uh, people fighting malnourishment and malnutrition particularly in rural area so what can we do about it there are many ways and uh, here you have a very good example of household vegetable gardens right or it can you can also say it as a home gardens now what home gardens can done as per a study home gardens could provide households with 135 kilo of uh, leguminous uh, vegetables tubers leafy greens and gourds now this 135 kilo is more than this is coming per year right 135 kilo this is more than double the amount of vegetables they were buying in local market so any household uh, the vegetables they buy more than that can be produced out of their home gardens and this can be home gardens can be applied by the agri people who are affiliated with agriculture as well in their field as well they can uh, apply this thing and this will help them uh, increase their income right uh, double doubling their income by 2022 and uh, when they have all these vegetables and tubers and leafy greens and etc these things are going to ensure the nutrition or the nutrition security of their family and if they sell it in the market then of course the, uh, the people who will buy it they would be able to have access to nutrition food as well uh, then it talks about food security act of 2013 and the good thing about the food security act of 2013 is that it uh, includes the millets in public distribution system right the shop uh, chain uh, on which you have to take your ration card and based on that you get uh, subsidized subsidized uh, all these uh, uh, food items right food grains and bajra and millet and um, rice and wheat so this uh, millets are included and the good thing about millet is that uh, they are superior uh, compared to the other grains and the other thing is that they are climate resistant as well they can be uh, grown in they grow very well in drier areas as well they require very less water the soil as well is it's not necessary that you have to plant them or keep highest quality of soil uh, for them even in the in the sort of semi barren land as well this millet can survive so this is a good thing about them and uh, nutrition value is high so more and more millets should everyone should uh, of course eat some sort of millet and that will help you get all this micro nutrition that is required for our body bio fortification what bio fortification basically means and of course why we do it to ensure to uh, to make sure that all this micro nutrient right deficiencies can be removed it basically means high yielding crops plus high nutrient crop varieties they are mixed together and then you have a sort of food crop and then you implant it so it is basically making some sort of changes with crops that's biofortification and the main aim is to uh, to eliminate this micro nutrient deficiency this article also talks about empowering women and of course we can understand that women uh, see they are the one who look after their kids and uh, if uh, they are not looking after them say for example if the if the mother is working particularly we see this thing taking place in the labor people who are working as a uh, manual uh, in the field of ma manual labor particularly women so when they are working they are not able to look after their kids uh, particularly when they are growing up and that this is one of the main reason why they go through all this uh, deficiency in nutrition and malnourishment and stuntedness right and in india we have 70% of all farm work is conducted by women then as well uh, we have not empowered them and if we empower them then they will grow all these things that are necessary uh, for the economy for agriculture for themselves and in this way we would be able to achieve this uh, all three goals right we will be able to achieve this 
enough agriculture production nutritious food and health for both agriculture field and for human beings moving on to another item you have three items here one is pertaining this is an editorial on germany i have gone through it i don't find anything that could be helpful for your examination here again uh, this is about the death of a journalist um, santanu bhumik but this uh, article is uh, sort of biased I, i won't say biased but it is a sort of political commentary and this is not going to help us this is about basically two political far parties blaming each other right so here the writer is from one political party so she is blaming the opposition and this is the thing that is going on and here as well it is pertaining to film i don't find anything that is related to you but here is one of the most important thing that took place and that is pradhan mantri has launched a new scheme called pradhan mantri sahaj bijli har ghar yojana it is also called as so bhagya right so bhagya stands for sahaj bijli har ghar yojana remember this thing what are its aim to provide electricity to unelectrified households by march 2019 remember this is the target of our country to ensure that each and every house in our country has got electricity connection the other one is uh, other target or aim is to provide subsidy on equipments like transformers meters and wires so the pe poor people who cannot afford all these things they would be provided subsidy so that they can get this electric connection the budget is 16000 crore rupees and no price will be charged for the poor to get electric city connection of course you know that you have to pay some fees and deposit money etc but this will be uh, not applicable to the poor people prime minister said that Th thomas alva edison invented the bulb and at that point of time he said that we will make electricity so cheap that only the rich will burn candle but here things are other way around in india people have to burn candle in fact the poor people have to burn candle and we have 4 crore people of in our country who do not have access to electricity this is huge amount and that is one of the reason why we are not able to develop there are many areas there are many states who are lagging behind right particularly if you see the central indian states then you have northeastern states these are the states that are lagging behind we need uh, we need 24 by 7 electricity reliable supply of electricity uh, we have to connect this play people and this villages with uh, grid right smart grid is more favorable uh, because uh, smart grids can distribute power in much more better way at present we are also seeing a sort of a massive change uh in in the way these things are the, the way electric city is uh, is set, say, say for example it is getting more decentralized because now people are able to apply this uh, solar rooftops and other sorts of re uh, renewable energy because of this they, uh, there are many areas as well uh, many people who do not need power from the government so this is good as well this is a new thing that we are seeing in future of course this is going to be the new normal and uh, we have to ensure that uh, the main thing why we are not able to do it because the power distribution companies are not healthy when i say not healthy that means financially they are not healthy and the reason why they are not healthy is because 100 percent metering each and every person each and every company no matter if you give connection then you have to ensure that you they it is going through a legal way right metering should be there there should be meters power meters the other thing is that they should also introduce prepaid uh, metering so pay as you go or prepaid one so if you want to use say for example electricity for 10 days you recharge it and you insert the card then only you can use it these things are, are uh, means if you go to england then you will find this sort of uh, thing that they have prepaid card and i'm sure many other countries do have as well so metering is important prepaid metering again is uh, much required in country like india so these are the things and uh, we have to ensure efficiency as well less consumption will lead to less bills and less bills means uh, we have to produce less electricity as well so these are the things so this is some additional information of course we will find uh, more items on it and uh, economic panel uh, is set up and this is basically the way economy is going down you know it very well because we are discussing it the chairman is going to be bibek debroy and there are other people here help yourself with it now this is a very funny thing that took place you can see here in picture uh, she is a pakistani diplomat and she uh, basically <laughs> raised a picture 
of this girl here and she said that this is the thing going on uh, this is this is basically what india is doing but it is a matter of shame for pakistan it was trying to blame india but uh, it failed right very badly because this picture that you can see here is from a lady or a f from a girl that is from palestine not from kashmir so india has exposed and again Pakistan, it is very funny that their diplomats are making this sort of mistakes. Can you imagine how their things or the way the culture of their diplomacy would be? Another item is James Mattis, who is the defense secretary. He's going, he's in India now and uh, he's going to have a one to one meeting with uh, his counterpart. Afghanistan is going to be a topic. We have talked about it yesterday in, in, in more in depth fashion. And here I have some uh, uh, sort of comb uh, casa. Uh, what is comb casa? Full forms are given here. So please go through it when you download this slide. Putin is going to send a special representative in India because the way Pakistan and in Pakistan and Russian relations are growing on, they are conducting um, they are conducting military exercises with each other, and uh, this is uh, not something that India will cherish. So to ensure that the relations are going on smoothly he is going to send one of putin basically means russia is going to send uh, one of his uh, diplomat to india to have a word with our country japanese prime minister because of the things that are going on in korean peninsula he has said that let's uh, go for a quick election uh, let's do the election earlier on so we know that who is going to rule and once this is done so if there is any sort of uh, war situation then uh, the country is not engaged or it's not going through any sort of this change of guard situation last item is about uh, database and uh, uh, government is going to link this uh, this uh, the provident fund schemes you have three different provident fund schemes i have provided you definition here very easy to understand one please you help yourself with it and this will ensure that there is no sort of leakage and security is maintained as well or, or you can say that the people when they transfer their job from one place to another they don't lose their money or uh, they don't have to go through all this bureaucratic process i have a couple of questions for you and uh, with this dear friends uh, let me remind you about the 29th september is the last date for this navratri offer do not forget to subscribe to our youtube channel share this lecture if you have enjoyed it if you have learned something then do pass us your like pass us your valuable comment and with this i end this discussion i'll see you all soon till then take care goodbye jai hind